Hi everyone, welcome to our TNT for Wednesday, the middle of the week. And uh, we start off today with a message from Pinata. And he says, 100% confirmed, Tim's run out of stories. If I have to hear one more thing about the air pollution, I'm going to lose my mind. Well, that's very, very bad news for you, Pinata. I'm using a different camera today, so I'm not sure where I'm looking. Uh, we are going to be doing, just very briefly today, at the start of the program, some stories about the air pollution problem in Thailand. So just a warning, because I am concerned about your mental health. I don't want you to lose your mind. Uh, but with 26,000 or so people dying from respiratory diseases uh, linked to air pollution each year in Thailand, I do believe it's an important story for them and for those families. Uh, also for all the tourist industry up there in northern Thailand, which is losing millions of baht every year from this air pollution. Uh, for all the people that are living up there and having to breathe this rubbish, I think it's also an important story. So just a very quick warning for you, Pinata, to avoid the first five or ten minutes of the program today. Head off to the kitchen, grab a cup of tea and just chill out. So welcome to everybody else to our Wednesday TNT. Uh, I don't want to bother Pinata with any pesky news about air pollution, so let him have a little rest for five minutes. Let's go to Thai PBS World. And the Interior Ministry refuses to declare polluted Mae Sai a disaster zone. So there were calls from business leaders to declare it a disaster zone so that they could get some immediate action. The story says that the air pollution in Mae Sai district in Chiang Rai province has not reached reached a level that justifies the declaration of a disaster zone or the imposition of a curfew, according to Thailand's Interior Minister Anupong Pao Chinda. Well, yes, 11 times the safe level. The safe level in Thailand set at 50 micrograms per cubic metre. World Health Organisation sets it at 25. So 22 times the safe amount as registered by the World Health Organisation isn't enough to declare it as a disaster zone. Great. He warned that such tough measures may hurt the tourism industry and adversely affect a lot of people. Not that the high levels of air pollution are already affecting a lot of people, like everyone. And down the bottom there, Anupong also said that there are no clear criteria defined as to what level of PM 2.5 would be considered enough to declare a disaster, adding that in practice it may be difficult to set such criteria because airborne dust does not remain static. He said that he's instructed all provinces which are experiencing air pollution to coordinate with the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment over how to address the problem as most of the forest fires are occurring in forest reserves. Brilliant. Now, in Australian football parlance, we would call this a handball. And another story from Thai PBS World. Over 3,400 people in Chiang Rai treated for respiratory conditions last week. And the Chiang Rai governor says that he will not declare Mare Sai District a disaster zone as proposed by the business sector and civic groups for fear that the measure will have a negative impact on a lot of people. But he will explore other options. Oh, that's nice. 3,478 people, including 372 in Mare Sai, have visited state hospitals in the province with respiratory conditions such as sore throats and nasal irritations. The governor says that the provincial officers have deployed trucks to spray water into the air, which can ease the dust problem to a certain extent. He's also due to visit Mare Sai District today. So congratulations to the Governor of Chiang Rai and also the Interior Minister of Thailand for doing precisely nothing. And let's just check the situation up there in Northern Thailand today. And there we go. We're back up in the hazardous uh, area. This is about eight o'clock Thai time on Wednesday morning and shows a lot of fires, as we say, up in the Laos area. Of course, uh, around the border areas, we've got a lot of these hazardous zones, according to iqair.com. I've put an underline under where Chiang Rai and Chiang Mai would normally be, uh, with the sort of covered up there by the monitoring stations, showing that they've got very unhealthy and hazardous air quality. So the situation, I think, is pretty dire up there. It's certainly a lot worse this year, as I've been following this story for the past 
I don't know, four or five years. Seems to be certainly a lot worse this year and for a longer period than I've seen it in the past. Uh, going to the Bangkok Post now, it says ASEAN eyed to help curb haze. And speaking after yesterday's cabinet meeting, the PM Prayut Chanuchar says the issue must be put on ASEAN's agenda if a solution is to be found. And exactly what did the Prime Minister do? Well, he said that the Foreign Affairs Minister, Don Pramudwenai, had sent a letter to member countries seeking their support. That'll fix it. I signed the letter myself. We want to seek their cooperation, particularly in dealing with slash and burn agriculture. Meanwhile, Thai farmers must also cooperate by avoiding such activities. He also told relevant agencies to step up their efforts to tackle the polluting haze. And good to see that the Bangkok Post is also starting to republish some of the fire maps from NASA that I've been using to show the problem over the past couple of years. And so they've done a zone of fire map and shows there the various countries that are contributing to northern Thailand's critical air pollution problem. So well done to the Thai media for covering this story as much as it has over the past week. Final word from General Anupong. He said the next move is to ask motorists to avoid entering areas cloaked in the thick haze as exhaust fumes are one of the main sources of PM 2.5. Well, no, it's not. You're wrong. The vast majority of the PM 2.5 is coming from these agricultural fires. You can see it on all the maps, all the monitoring. The evidence is there. If it was the traffic, then Thailand would have this PM 2.5 problem throughout the whole year, which it doesn't. It's the burning season that's causing this, respectfully, General. And uh, big thanks to Five Star Marine, and uh, I'm still waiting for them to pick me up, drag me out to the islands in Pangna Bay. It's going to be happening sooner or later, I think probably early next week. But if you would like to go on a private premium charter out to one of the islands off Phuket, then I can highly recommend Five Star Marine. There's a link in the description under this video. While you're there, click that like button. You're watching the Wednesday TNT. Thank you very much for dropping in. And uh, let's talk airlines and the problems with these high airfares. It's being addressed by the Bangkok Post in their article, Airlines Juggle Demand as Fares Skyrocket. The World Tourism Organization predicts Europe and the Middle East will reach pre-pandemic international tourist levels this year, forecasting 80 to 90 percent overall recovery, while the Pacific Asia Travel Association projects a growth rate of at least 71 percent. Yet the aviation industry faces a manpower shortage as demand for air travel surges while seat capacity remains limited. This has resulted in a significant increase in airfares as supply struggles to keep up with pent-up demand from eager travellers. So interested to know if you've been able to find a few cheap airfares. There are a few discounts around, but uh, most of the time, I think people are noticing that the airfares are up to 50% higher than they used to be pre-COVID. So interested in your comments about that. Let's go on with the story, and it says that according to IATA, global air passenger traffic last year recovered at 68.5% compared to 41% in 2021. And Philip Goh, who's the regional vice president for the Asia Pacific at IATA, says the spike in passenger airfares resembles the high price of cargo services during the three-year pandemic when limited supply could not match demand. Well, isn't that the truth? People stuck at home ordering things online, buying new TVs, buying furniture, uh, working from home and buying a new desk. Uh, a lot of cargo costs did increase a lot during the COVID pandemic. And the story says that seat capacity on many routes, notably in Asia Pacific, have yet to be restored to normal as it was affected by various travel restrictions, labour shortages and the time needed to bring parked aircraft back into service. And he goes on to say that there are unpredictable factors like manpower shortages, service restoration, retraining of staff and refreshing operating and safety procedures and ticket prices will continue to be expensive, which is in line with IATA's forecast that industry passenger traffic will not return to the 2019 level until next year. 
And then some comments from local airline operators. The former Nokia CEO said high airfares are expected to persist for two to three years as some airlines suffered losses from the pandemic and wanted to make up for that period. And for example, airfares from Thailand to major cities in Europe are projected to exceed 40,000 baht and airlines are unlikely to lower prices anytime soon, especially for popular routes such as Japan. And as of the end of last year, Thai and its affiliate, that's Thai Smile, had slashed their fleet size from 103 in the pre-pandemic period to 64, of which 41 jets were used by Thai and the rest by Thai Smile Airways. So Thai Airways, a much smaller, compact, perhaps more competitive airline than it was pre-COVID. And as they say now, for something completely different, let's go to this video and published by Stay in Thailand. And a person there on the walls of the, the Grand Palace Complex and uh, scribbling the numbers 112. And obviously they're tackled by police and security. Uh, let that video run. So this is outside the Grand Palace Complex in Bangkok calling for some other people to come over. Let's find out a bit more what was happening. So the person scribbling 112, referring to Article 112 in the Thai Criminal Code, which uh, refers to Les Majeste, which is uh, about people criticising the monarchy. And so now they were doing their best to try and cover it up whilst they were going down to Thai What To Do and buying a can of white paint. And there's the, uh, the offender and he will be dealt with fairly severely. Just uh, going back to that story, there was a pro-democracy activist arrested after tagging the wall of Wat Pra Kiao, and uh, the criminal code says that whoever defames, insults, or threatens the king, the queen, the heir apparent, or the regent, shall be punished with imprisonment of three to 15 years. Well, no doubt that young man will be appearing in court, and his uh, brief moment of protest with a spray can uh, sadly, I believe, will probably be dealt with quite severely. To our next story today, and we head off to the Thai newsroom. An Iraqi man faints upon being caught overstaying more than eight years. An Iraqi man who overstayed in Thailand more than eight years fainted when Chombri Immigration and Pattaya Police showed up at his house to arrest him. It's certainly a surprise when the Thai police are marching up your driveway and the 52-year-old had hidden in Patia's Mabyalia community for a long time. He didn't have a job, he didn't socialise with anyone, it was feared he might turn to crime. It's really worth thinking about some of these expats that sort of get stuck in Thailand for whatever reason, unable to return to their country, maybe no one to return to, and there's no welfare or support system for these people. Uh, a situation that I'm actually talking to some people at the moment to see if we might be able to address this problem long term. As soon as the police team showed up at his house where he was sitting in front, he turned pale and fainted and was immediately given first aid. And he arrived back in 2014 at Suwanapum Airport, but he didn't return to his country and overstayed his visa nearly 3,000 days. And the Deputy National Police Chief Surachat Hakpan, nicknamed Big Joke, oh, of course we need constant reminding about that, has ordered all units to quickly round up foreigners who have entered the country illegally or have overstayed their visas or did not stick to the purpose of their visa. And down the bottom, the offence for overstaying in this country carries a maximum penalty of two years imprisonment and or a fine of 20,000 baht. Offenders will be blacklisted and forbidden from entering the country for 10 years. As an expat, as a foreigner visiting here, it's really important just to keep on top of your visa and uh, put those dates somewhere to remind you when you need to do your 90 day reporting or renew your visa. Probably the best advice I could give to anyone here. As we head into our next story from Coconuts, Bangkok, no booze, powder or immodesty at Bangkok's Songkran events. And that's from the Bangkok governor, Chad Chart, who said yesterday that people, read women, says the article, won't be allowed to wear revealing clothes during the upcoming festivities that fall between April 13 to 15. Among other rules are no booze sales, no use of high-pressure water guns, and no smearing of powders on faces. 
They're the three things I usually think about in relation to the song crying activities. That prickly powder, if they smear that on any part of your body, it certainly stings. And a few things wind up the city fathers, like unabashed women in control of their bodies. Bit of editorial sneaking into this article. Despite repeated threats that the wet days of Songkran will be dry of alcohol, that's only been the case at official city events. Although Chad Chart was vague, it's highly unlikely a general booze ban will be declared anywhere in Bangkok during Songkran. I think he's right. But there are usually... uh, official activities and they're aimed at families and they're held in all the major tourist areas. Uh, To our next story from Thai PBS World and 126 tonnes of sulfuric acid bound for Myanmar was impounded at the Lam Chabang port which is the main shipping port south of Bangkok and the customs chief at Lam Chabang said that the 126 tonnes of sulfuric acid worth 12.6 million baht, which were in transit, have been impounded because the importer couldn't produce the required documentation concerning the transit of dangerous goods. They were being shipped from India to Myanmar via Thailand. I would have thought that there was a much less circuitous route than uh, going via sea through a Thai port. And uh, since last October, customs officials at Lam Chabang have seized 220 tonnes of sodium cyanide, 26 tonnes of opium seeds and 2,600 kilograms of dried opium leaves. I wonder what they're being used for. Uh, So just a quick thought, what do you use sulfuric acid for? And Google says sulfuric acid is the world's largest volume industrial chemical. The main use is in the production of phosphate fertilisers also used to manufacture explosives, other acids, dyes, glue, wood preservatives and automobile batteries. So they're either using it for manufacturing fertiliser for their agriculture or perhaps manufacturing explosives. And just finally about Myanmar from the Bangkok Post, Su Chi's party dissolved. Myanmar's election commission announced yesterday that the NLD party would be dissolved for failing to re-register under a tough new military drafted electoral law. The NLD, which Aung San Suu Kyi led to a crushing victory over military-backed parties back in 2015 and 2020, will be automatically cancelled as a political party from today. And the end of the NLD appears inevitable, given that the new law also says parties can be dissolved for communications with terrorist organisations, which basically refers to anybody who disagrees with the Burmese military. The NLD said earlier that it would not contest what it said was certain to be an illegitimate election if one were held. So that could never happen in Thailand, where an incumbent government could use its constitutional court to ban opposition parties. Election here on May the 14th in Thailand. And with that, thank you to Five Star Marine. Thank you to you. And hopefully you'll join us again with another TNT tomorrow.